Well, let's start uh, with the discussion for today. Um, I'm going to record it so I can show it to Alan and whatever, because Alan had surgery. So, and Duviel also. So, anyway, uh, we all know that. Like, if we open up a browser tab and we type www.google.com, what is it that the browser actually does? Um, it's sending a, request. Sending a request. Yes. Very good. It's sending a request to that server, to google.com, right? And then it's sending a GET request, to be more specific, and it gets it, what it receives back is a bunch of HTML code that we can see. Uh, if we go to the Elements tab, it's all this HTML code and, and JavaScript files, CSS, like a bunch of stuff. So anything that might be linked from this HTML code, any external files, it goes and loads those, loads those two, and it runs the whole program. But the point is that we type an address here, we send a request, okay? Um, sometimes it's actually a lot of times it's very useful for our programs to be able to send a request to a server just from the program itself, from the JavaScript you know, uh, uh, file, to be able to send a request to a server, get back the response, and do something with it. So um, actually, if you do, for example, like, you know, I don't know if you've noticed that sometimes you fill out a form, and uh, you click on the button, and there's no pa the page doesn't reload. It's like it waits for a second, and then it just gives you a tiny little message somewhere in the little in the little, in a little HTML element that tells you, hey, your message was sent, or there was an error, or whatever. That's because the script from that page was able to send a request. Um, and some some other times you have stuff like uh, like if you go to drive.google.com. Let me see if I can see something asynchronous here. So. We see that like the whole page, if I go into, for example, this memory ace folder, the whole page didn't reload. Only the, only the content pane that's inside, you know, the main content pane changed, right? If I go back to my drive, the whole page doesn't reload. You go share with me, Google Photos, I change all these things. Um, all of those are little requests that are getting sent by the script that's running this page, but I'm not reloading. The URL that I'm at is not changing, you see? Well, actually, it is changing because it's sending a request, but the, the whole page is not reloading. That's a point, and we can do that. Um, that right. So you the jQuery is is one uh, the easiest way to do it. jQuery allows you to do it is, is in in the easiest way, and uh, you can use jQuery to send requests. And we're gonna see how to do that right now. So if I I'm gonna open up a Notepad, if you just say dollar sign dot ajax, right, and you open parentheses, and then you close parentheses. We can pass an object inside here, right? So a, a bunch of keys and values. And the main things that you need, Kiki, do you remember where they are? Uh, you, you yeah, URL. Where are you sending it to, right? So we're going to do, we actually have a little server that's running a bunch of little uh, applications that you can send requests to. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be writing a program that gets a quote or a riddle, whatever you want. So uh, if, you wanna, if we want to request a quote from the FBI API server, we have to put HTTP colon slash slash www.fbi-grad.com port 4004 slash um, quotes. I think that's what it is. Let me double check. Uh, yeah, no. Well, let's see riddles first. Let's request uh, riddles. Okay. Then, uh, this is just going to send a request, right? The server is going to send you back a response, and it's going to get lost unless we do something with it. Okay, so in order to be able to do something with the response that we get, we have to have another parameter here, success. So if the request succeeds, you're going to run this function. And the function, it's, the easiest way to do it is to take three parameters. The first thing that, it, that, that gets passed into the function is the response itself, then the text status, and then the actual full jQuery XML HTTP response object, or X, HTTP request. Uh, JQ, etc. Okay, so these two we seldom, if ever, use. This is the main guy you're interested in. This is the actual response from the server um, that you're going to do stuff with. So we have that function. And uh, for now, let's just console.log the response. Okay? So if I grab this and I paste it into our website, right? 
the FBI, I know FBI that it has jQuery loading, which is why I can do this. If I paste it right here, there, you see, it, like a little split second went by, and then I got this, object riddle text, and then there's a riddle, and the answer is wind, right here, right? So this is what the server is responding. I'm sending a request to this endpoint, um, this is the URL slash riddles, and this is a server that, that I programmed to respond with a riddle. Um, and this is, by the way, this is what sometimes referred to as a RESTful endpoint. Because uh, it's just, you're sending a request to a URL and it's responding, uh, and it, it's, it responds asynchronously. It's designed for this. It's not designed to be loaded as a page. So if I type this and try to load it as a page, it'll still work, right? But it won't give me any HTML. It'll get, just give me like a text representation of that object. Okay? Uh, so, you know, you, what I saw, what, what you see in what I did, right? I, I put the URL up here, and the server sends me back the response, and my browser doesn't really know what to do with that other than, than put it in the window. If I want to do other stuff with it, then I have to, you know, do it with Ajax and have a success um, handler. And let's say that um, I want to replace all the contents of all my H1s in the, in the entire page with the uh, riddle text. So I would do this. I would send a risk. Let me copy my request again. And let me change this so that it's vertical. Okay. Let me see real quick what type of element this is. So it's an H1. Okay. So if I want to replace all the H1s on the page with whatever comes back, the randomly generated riddle, I would say, hey, jQuery, get me every H1. And then inside their text, I want to put the response dot uh, riddle text. Okay. And when I run this, it's going to take a second, and there you go. See, it replaced the text of the, of the title here with that riddle text. And if I find another H1, which I don't think there are any others, so if I do it again, I'm going to do it with H2s. There you go. These were H2s. This was another H2, another H2 another h2. So you see it basically replaced the contents of every h2 element in the page with what was in the riddle text uh, attribute of the response object. And the response object was just this guy, right? So you're basically what, what we're going to be working on for the next, actually until the end of the unit, is sending a request to a server, then getting back a response and doing something with the response, like embedding like the contents of the response somewhere in the HTML. Okay? And that's pretty much the, the gist of Ajax programming. So what we're going to do today, yeah. Okay, so inside where you have the dollar sign, mm -hmm. parentheses H1 or H2, mm -hmm. so that just it transverses like the DOM or whatever, mm -hmm. and it looks for those elements, right? Exactly. And then it applies what? The response to those elements. So, no, I did, so it traverses the DOM, finds every H2, right? So now I have a bunch of H2, H2s, mm -hmm. right? And now I'm calling the text function of jQuery, right? Which just replay if I, the text function... Um, if there's no argument, it's just going to give me what text is in there right now, right? If there is a parameter, which in this case there is, I'm passing something into it, uh -huh. then it's going to replace the contents of all of these guys with whatever I put in here, okay? And where's resp, that riddle text coming from, right? Resp is what gets passed into this function as the response from the server. Mm -hmm. So I'm sending this request, Ajax, to this URL, right? The server's going to respond something, what it's going to respond with is going to get passed into the success function handler as the first parameter of it. Okay? And then I can use that. It, it can have multiple... It can be a much more complicated object than this. You know, this object just has two, two things. Real text and answer. Right? It can be much more complicated than that. Actually, the last project that we're going to do, we're going to be sending requests to the Wikipedia servers, and the objects that we're going to get back are going to be super, 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 super complicated. So, um... But yeah, for now, we're just going to do a real simple example of sending a request to, actually, we're going to do it to here. Let me figure this out real quick. Is it quote or quotes? Or maybe I don't even have it anymore. Quotes. Quote. No. Yeah, for the quote, I think... Uh, uh, 
I think I have to say post. So one more thing you can do inside an AJAX request, right, is specify a method. Method, and you can say post. So by default it's get, but if you want to post something, you can say method post, and usually when you're posting, you also want to pass some data. But in this case, um, yeah, I guess I got to go back and, and re redo that route and make sure that it's added in the server. Uh, but so there's, again, so there's requesting data from a server, and we use get for that, right? And for, if we're requesting data, all we need is URL and success. And optionally, we can also have a function there as an error, like in, uh, we can have an error parameter in here, like error, colon, and then a function to, you know, specify what we're going to do if there's an error communicating with the server. So anyway, that's requesting information. Now, sending information to a server, you have to post. So you need the URL, you need the method post, you need what's going to happen after this succeeds, and you need what data you're posting. So you need a fourth attribute, the data. Okay? We've done some of that before. We've done, we've used form, we've, used, we've done forms posting with Ajax. Okay? So we're going to get some more practice on that now. Okay? So I'll, I'll, I'll get the, the quotes. It's going to be singular quotes route fixed. And then, uh, but in the meantime, you guys can start making a nice looking page with a nice background or whatever and some nice styling. And then in your script that executes as soon as the page loads, just send a request to that URL. I'm going to pull it up back here. Send a request to that URL. Quote. And assume that you're going to get back a response that's just going to be, it's going to be a string. The response is not going to be an object. It's going to be a simple string that you can use to put it somewhere in some DOM element. Okay?